Greetings aspirants, welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar AS Academy for the date 16th of June 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles we will be seeing today. Now let's get into the discussion. Now let us take up this news article. It talks about various petitions that have been filed stating that Article 300A of Indian Constitution is being violated. So what is the background of these petitions? If you can remember, few days ago, certain derogatory remarks were made about Prophet Muhammad by two members of the ruling party. This led to widespread reaction throughout the world. While Middle Eastern countries demanded India to apologize, internally protest happened in various Indian states. Particularly, the protest in Uttar Pradesh turned violent and police force was used to handle them. After this incident, the Uttar Pradesh authorities started demolishing houses of Muslims, alleging that it was illegally constructed. But opposition alleges that these Muslims were targeted because they participated in the protest. Whatever might be the reason, houses of Muslims have been demolished without any prior warning. This has violated many rights including the rule of law. Particularly, it has violated right to property under Article 300A and that is why petitions have been filed now. So, let us see the status of right to property in India. First of all, what is property? In the 1970 case law, R.C. Cooper West Union of India, which is also called the Bank Nationalization Case, the Supreme Court interpreted that property means the highest right that a man can have to anything. Particularly, it is the right one has to lands or tenements, goods or chattels and it is that right which does not depend on others' courtesy. So, throughout the history and world, right to property is one of the most controversial human rights because of unequal distribution of wealth. We cannot refuse the fact that property is associated with the amount of money one holds. In case of India, Unequal distribution of wealth was prevalent mainly during British Indian times due to the various systems like Zamindari system, Riyadwari system, Mahalwari system and the Jagirdari system. So, when India attained independence, land reforms were introduced. Land reforms include fixing, sealing on land holdings. But again, such land reforms contradicted right to property, mainly of the rich section which held more land. But right to property was seen as a necessary social transformation to achieve a liberal democracy. Due to this, it is said that Constitutional Assembly debated on the right to property for over two and a half years. And finally, it became one of the seven fundamental rights under Part 3 of Indian Constitution. Constitution provides this right under two articles. What are they? They are Article 19 f and Article 31. Here, Article 19 f guaranteed to every citizen the right to acquire, hold and dispose of property. And then, Article 31 guaranteed to everyone the right against deprivation of his or her property. It provided that no person shall be deprived of his or her property except by an authority of law. The article also empowered the state to acquire or requisition the property of a person only on two conditions. First, it should be for public purpose. Second, it should provide for payment of compensation in the form of amount to the owner. Note here that Article 31 was applied to both citizens and non-citizens. As I already said, right to property is a controversial one. Because of this, many petitions have been filed in the court of law and even the parliament dealt with this a number of times. This resulted into numerous constitutional amendments. The constitutional amendments like the 1st, 4th, 7th, 25th, 39th, 40th and 42nd amendments all dealt with this matter. Through these amendments, Articles 31A, 31B and 31C have been added and modified from time to time. But what are the objectives behind such amendments? They mainly aimed to nullify the effects of Supreme Court judgments on the right and also aim to protect 
certain laws from being challenged on the grounds of contravention of fundamental rights mostly the compensation aspect was the bone of contention all this finally ended with the 44th constitutional amendment act of 1978 why because this amendment repealed article 191f and article 31 from part 3 of the constitution thereby abolishing the right to property as a fundamental right additionally the 44th constitutional amendment act of 1978 made right to property as a legal right under article 300a in part 12 of the constitution article 300a provided that no person shall be deprived of his or her property except by a authority of law this means due procedure is to be followed for each such deprivations this did not happen in the demolition of houses in uttar pradesh that is why the petitioners argue the up authorities violated article 300a of the constitution so remember that right to property still remains a legal right and a constitutional right but it is no longer a fundamental right so it is not a part of the basic structure of the constitution but what is legal right here means it means it can be regulated it can be curtailed abridged or modified by an ordinary law of the parliament without the need of a constitutional amendment it also protects private property against executive action but not against legislative action plus in the case of violation of this right the aggrieved person cannot ask for its enforcement and cannot directly move the supreme court under article 32 that deals with the right to constitutional remedies it also means that there will be no guaranteed right to compensation in case of acquisition or requisition of private property by the state but amendments were again introduced to provide for exception to this one under two instances compensation has to be paid first is when the state acquires the property of a minority educational institutions it was added by the 44th constitutional amendment act and is provided under article 30 second the compensation has to be provided when the state acquires the land held by a person under her personal cultivation and the land is within the statutory ceiling limits this was added by the 17th amendment act of 1964 and is provided under article 31a that's all regarding this discussion see in this discussion we saw the evolution of the right to property jurisprudence in india okay with this let us conclude this discussion and move on to the next news article look at this news article this news article talks about lgbtq community the article just argues that the homophobic attitude of society goes against the constitutional principle of fraternity so in this news article discussion let us see what is this homophobic attitude and how this attitude goes against the constitutional principle of fraternity firstly what is this homophobic attitude see homophobia is a culturally produced fear or prejudice against homosexuals that can take the form of legislative limitations bullying or even violence against homosexuals here homosexuality means sexual interest in an attraction to members of one's own sex the term gay is frequently used as a synonym for homosexual female homosexuality is often referred to as lesbianism no coming back see the term homophobia was coined by george weinberg an american clinical psychologist in his book society and healthy homosexuals as you know the suffix phobia generally designates an irrational fear here in the case of homophobia the word instead refers to an attitudinal temperament that ranges from mild dislike to outright hatred of those who are sexually or romantically attracted to others of the same sex it is an socially constructed reaction to homosexuality the author says this homophobic attitude runs against the constitutional values of fraternity and dignity the supreme court also felt that this is why recently the supreme court decriminalized homosexuality by striking off parts of section 377 of the indian penal code 
which were held violative of fundamental rights of LGBTQ community. Talking about Section 377, Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code 1860, which is a relic of British India, states that voluntary carnal intercourse against the order of nature with any man, woman, or animal shall be punishable. This included private consensual sex between adults of same sex. In this judgment, the Supreme Court made it clear that Article 14 of the Constitution guarantees equality before law. and it applies to all classes of citizens and it clearly stated that equality before law cannot be denied by prioritizing public or religious morality the verdict thereby ensured inclusiveness of lgbtq community and through this supreme court held the supremacy of constitutional morality in india apart from this the supreme court also observed that homosexuality is not unique to humans which dispels the prejudice that is against the order of nature since modern psychiatric studies and legislations recognize that a gay person and transgender do not suffer from a mental disorder the supreme court stated that they cannot be penalized based on those condition so based on these observation the supreme court decriminalized homosexuality by striking off parts of section 377 of the indian penal code after the recent supreme court judgment provisions of section 377 remain applicable only in cases of non-consensual carnal intercourse with adults all acts of carnal intercourse with minors and acts of bestiality and keep in mind that this judgment does not come easily or quickly there was a lot of work that went into it so here are some of the notable judgments that you have to know about let's see them one by one first is the nas foundation versus government of National Capital Territory of Delhi 2009 case in this judgment the Delhi High Court struck off section 377 legalizing consensual homosexual activities between adults next is the Suresh Kumar Koshla case 2013 in this case supreme court overturned the previous judgment by Delhi High Court that decriminalized homosexual acts and criminalized homosexuality once again The Supreme Court in this case argued that in 150 years less than 200 persons have been prosecuted under section 377. So, plight of sexual minorities could not be used as argument for deciding constitutionality of law. Further, the Supreme Court ruled that it was for the legislature to look into the desirability of deleting section 377 of Indian Penal Code. Thirdly in the landmark judgment in the Justice KS Puttasamy versus Union of India case 2017 the Supreme Court ruled that fundamental right to privacy is intrinsic to life and liberty and so it comes under section 21 of the Indian Constitution the Supreme Court declared that bodily autonomy was an integral part of right to privacy this bodily autonomy has within its ambit sexual orientation of an individual also And finally let us take the Naujit Singh Johar vs Union of India 2018 case. The judgment in this case decriminalized homosexuality. The judgment dismissed the position taken by Supreme Court in Suresh Kumar Koshla case 2013 that the LGBT community constitute a minuscule minority and so there was no need to decriminalize homosexual act. Despite the judgment homophobia is still prevalent in our society. Apart from this they also face some of the challenges like finding or building a supportive community worrying about others reaction to coming out or changes in their relationship status tension in family relations finding and engaging with romantic and sexual partners and finally loneliness or isolation so here comes the question of what can be done see the community no longer needed legislative reforms all it needed was increased acceptance from the society violence against the lgbtq community must stop lgbtq activism must be encouraged and parental power should be unleashed that's all regarding this discussion with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article this news article talks about the tiger that was involved in cattle kills see this happened in a place which is 1 km away from the biligiri rangaswami Temple Tiger Reserve and 6 km away from the Thalavadi Reserve Forest in Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve there was a 
six day joint combing operation by forest department officials of both Tamil Nadu and Karnataka in this operation no traces of tiger movement were found in the border area and finally the team made a confirmation that the tiger had returned to Karnataka this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us learn about the two tiger reserves in the news one will be about Billigiri Rangaswamy Temple Tiger Reserve and the other one will be about Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve okay now let's start our discussion first let us see about Billigiri Rangaswamy Temple Tiger Reserve it is located in Chamaraja Nagar district of Karnataka state this unique biogeographical habitat is in the middle of the bridge between western and eastern ghats in south india the tiger reserve derives its name from billigiri the white rocky cliff which has the temple of lord vishnu locally known as rangaswami it is also believed that the hill ranges gets its name due to the white mist and the silvery cloud which covers those lofty hills for the greater part of the year now let us see about the floral nature of the tiger reserve the major forest type of the reserves as per champion and seth classification are southern tropical evergreen forest southern tropical semi evergreen forest and the southern tropical moist deciduous forest look at this image to see some of the major species in the billigiri rangaswami temple tiger reserves now let us see about the fauna in the billigiri rangaswami temple tiger reserve see as many as 26 mammals have been recorded of which gaur sambar spotted deer barking deer and four horned antelope are the major ungulates what are ungulates ungulates are hoofed typically herbivorous quadruped mammals for example pigs camels hippopotamus horse tapirs rhinoceros or elephants then when we talk about the carnivores of the habitat it includes tiger leopard wild dog lesser cat and civet cat the arboreal mammal comprises of two primates and three species of squirrels including the giant flying squirrel there are 12 bird species that are endemic to the region the notable ones are yellow throated bulbul nilgiri wood pigeon rufous billed hawk eagle and perigean falcon then as many as 22 reptiles and 11 amphibians have been recorded lastly let us see the tiger status of the billigiri rangaswami temple tiger reserve the habitat has considerable tiger presence with a density of 9 per 100 square kilometer the major corridors of the reserves are edayarhalli doda sampinj chamarajanagar talamalai at punjur chamarajanagar talamalai at Mudahali the major elephant corridors in this reserves include Punjur Satyamangalam and Bailur Edayar Halli these corridors are vital as they help in the movement of animals including elephants during the pinch period in the forest anti poaching operations and stepped up protections are important thirsty areas in this tiger reserve the tiger reserve management has innovatively developed a software called Huli which is a footprint patrol monitoring system using gps this is about the billigiri rangaswami temple tiger reserve now let us move on to the satyamangalam tiger reserve see satyamangalam tiger reserve is located in the western ghats in the ero district of tamil nadu satyamangalam wildlife sanctuary was declared a tiger reserve in the year 2013 it is an important link between nilgiris and the eastern ghats landscape You can see the location of the Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve in this map. Okay, see the Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve encompasses large contiguous reserve forest with diversity of vegetation types, from dry thorn shrubs to patches of semi evergreen forest in the upper regions. Now look at these images to know about the wildlife and birds in the Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve. This area has been continuously receiving. huge influx of visitors to view the various migratory and native birds visiting and nesting in the tiger reserve this satyamangalam tiger reserve is part of the nilgiri biosphere landscape then this satyamangalam tiger reserve is connected to other well established tiger habitats like mudumalai tiger reserve 
பந்திப்பூர் டைகர் ரிசர்வ் அந்த பில்லிகிரி ரங்கசுவாமி டெம்பிள் டைகர் ரிசர்வ் அண்ட் மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட்லி திஸ் சத்தியமங்கலம் டைகர் ரிசர்வ் வான் த ப்ரெஸ்டீஜியஸ் டி எக்ஸ் டூ அவார்ட் ஒய் இஸ் திஸ் அவார்ட் கிவன் திஸ் அவார்ட் இஸ் நார்மலி கிவன் ஃபார் டைகர் கன்சர்வேஷன் ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் சி சத்தியமங்கலம் டைகர் ரிசர்வ் காட் திஸ் அவார்ட் பிகாஸ் த டைகர் நம்பர்ஸ் இன் திஸ் டைகர் ரிசர்வ் டபுள் டு எயிட்டி சின்ஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் டென் ஸோ தட்ஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் சத்தியமங்கலம் டைகர் ரிசர்வ் வித் திஸ் லெட் அஸ் கன்க்ளூட் திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் அண்ட் டேக் அப் த நெக்ஸ்ட் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல் லுக் அட் திஸ் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல் திஸ் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் மேக்கிங் த ஹில்லாக்ஸ் சவுத் ஆஃப் திருப்பதி கிரீனர் திஸ் ஹில்லாக் இஸ் நோன் அஸ் யோகுல பர்வதம் நோ த கொஸ்டின் இஸ் ஹவு வில் இட் பி மேட் கிரீனர் This is to be done by using the drones. See, these drones will drop clay balls with 11 lakh seeds. Yes, the 11 lakh seeds will be mixed with clay and then molded into a shape of a ball so that it can be air dropped over the hillocks. Note that the seeds have been procured from Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. See, this will ensure a permanent habitat and make the region rich with biodiversity. thereby attracting visiting animals and birds this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us learn about the measures taken by our government to promote drones in india first let us see about drone mahotsav see bharat drone mahotsav 2022 was inaugurated by the prime minister it is the india's biggest drone festival see promotion of drone technology is a medium of advancing the government's commitment to good governance and ease of living in this event our prime minister interacted with kisan drone pilots witnessed open drone demonstration and interacted with startups in the drone exhibition center also the importance of drone technology in the fields of defense disaster management agriculture tourism film and entertainment are highlighted by the prime minister See drones can be significant creators of employment and economic growth. This is due to their reach, versatility and ease of use mainly in India's remote and inaccessible areas. Okay? This is about the Bharat Drone Mahotsav 2022. Now let us see about production linked incentive schemes for drones and drone components. The central government approved the production linked incentive scheme for drones and drone components. This is a step towards realizing our collective vision of a Atmanirbhar Bharat. Okay? See, India has the potential of becoming global drone hub by 2030. This is because of its traditional strengths in innovation, information technology, frugal engineering and its huge domestic demand. See, this production linked incentive scheme comes as a follow through of the liberalized drone rules 2021. This production link incentive scheme and the new drone rules 2021 are intended to catalyze super normal growth in the upcoming drone sector. So, this production link incentive scheme has a tenure of 3 years starting in the financial year 2021 to 2022. Now, what are the drone rules 2021? See in 2021, the aviation ministry notified a liberalized drone rules with the aim to encourage research and development and to make india a drone hub it abolished several permissions and approval the number of farms that needed to be filled was reduced from 25 to 5 and the types of fees was brought down from 72 to 4 then no permission is required for operating drones in green zones also there is no need for remote pilot license for non commercial use of micro and nano drones then it allowed for payloads up to 500 kilograms This have been allowed so that drone can be used as unmanned flying taxis. See, further the foreign ownership of companies operating drone has also been permitted. This is about the drone rules 2021. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about the measures taken by the government to promote drones in India. With this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Have a look at this news article. It talks about the 5G technology. See according to market watchers the 5G spectrum auction will bring significant advancements for the telecom industry and the consumers however some said the base price for spectrum remained a issue for the bidders this is for bidders who are expecting much lower rates okay so 
the roads are now clear for 5G auctions. This is probably one of the most awaited spectrum auctions. See the auctions will commence on July 26th. Note that the cabinet has approved 5G auctions at reserve prices recommended by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. The Troy recommended 39% cut in the reserve or floor price for the sale of 5G spectrum for mobile services. This is the crux of the news article given here. So in this context let us discuss about the 5G technology then we will see its benefits and the applications. Okay. To understand 5G it's helpful to understand what comes before it. Broadly first generation of mobile technology that is 1G was about voice. The ability to use a phone in a car or away from home really took root during the 1G ages. The advent of 2G introduced a short messaging layer. See this feature can still be seen in today's texting features. The move to 3G provided the core network speeds needed to launch smartphones. And 4G with its high data transfers gave us video with minimal buffering. And 4G also gave rise to many of the connected devices and services that we rely and enjoy every day. Now people are beginning to experience 5G and its transformative capabilities. See 5G is the fifth generation of wireless technology. It is one of the fastest, most robust technologies the world has ever seen. See it has quicker downloads, much lower lag and a significant impact on how we live, work and play. Let us see some of the important features of this 5G technology. It can provide higher speeds, lower latency and higher capacity than 4G networks. Here latency refers to the delay before a transfer of data begins following an information for its transfer. 5G speed and other connectivity benefits are expected to make businesses more efficient. So it gives consumers access to more information faster than ever before. For example, tech connected cars or smart stadiums and advanced gaming. They all will rely on 5G networks only. Okay. I have given here some of the applications of 5G technology. You can go through it. With this, let us conclude this discussion. In this discussion, we saw the basics about 5G and the applications of 5G. Now let us conclude the news analysis discussion session and take up the practice prelims questions. We have four practice prelims questions. Let us see them one by one. Let us take up the first question. It is a 2021 prelims question. What is the position of right to property in India? Four options are given. We have to find the correct option. Option A, legal right available to citizens only. Option B, legal right available to any person. Option C, fundamental right available to citizen only. Option D, neither fundamental right or legal right. See in our discussion itself, we saw that right to property is a legal right available to both citizens and non-citizens. So the correct answer is option B, legal right available to any person. Now let us move on to the second question. It is a two statement question. We have to find the correct statements. Let us take up the first statement. Billigiri Rangaswamy Temple Tiger Reserve won the TX2 award. This statement is incorrect because it is the Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve that won the TX2 award for doubling tiger count when compared to 2010. Now let us take up the second statement. Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve is part of the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. See this statement is correct because in our discussion itself we saw that Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve is part of the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Since they are asking the correct statements, the correct answer here is option B2 only. Now let us take up the third question. This is also a two statement question. We have to find the correct statements. This question is in reference to Drone Rules 2021. Let us take up the first statement. It reduced the number of forms to be filled. This statement is correct because in our discussion itself we saw that the number of forms to be filled was reduced from 25 to 5. Moving on to the second statement, it is to encourage India to become a drone hub. See this is an easy statement. We know the Drone Rules 2021 was introduced to encourage India to become a drone hub. Since both the statements are correct, the correct answer here is option C, both 1 and 2. Now let us take up the last question. This question is in reference to 5G technology. Two statements are given and we have to find the correct statement. Let us take up the first statement. Key feature of 5G technology is its high latency. This statement is incorrect because latency is the delay before transfer of data begins following an instruction for its transfer. 
so in 5g technology the latency rate is very low this is why this is the fastest technology available till now so statement one is incorrect moving on to the second statement its usage reaches to the level of smart devices this statement is correct see this we saw in our discussion it's a freight using 5g we can store the data collected via smart devices in any type of cloud computing like public cloud private cloud or even hybrid clouds so here statement one is incorrect and statement two is correct so the correct answer here is option b two only the main question based on today's discussion is displayed here write your answers and post them in the comment section if you like today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankara as academy youtube channel thank you